Talking about erectile dysfunction is not easy. Most brush it off or they blame themselves, saying things like, I had a long day at work. Sorry, honey, I'm just not feeling it. Guys, with Roman, it's easy to talk about with a real healthcare professional who can prescribe real medication. It's simple, safe, and totally discreet. With Roman, you get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. A healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, Roman will ship it to you with free two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward, simple, and discreet. Getting started just as easy. Go to GetRoman.com slash Chael. Complete an online visit. Go to GetRoman.com slash Chael today. If approved, you'll get $15 off your first order of ED treatment. Blahal Muhammad was talking about this weekend's big main event, Colby versus Usman. And Blahal went as far as to say that Usman was going to win and he was going to dominate. I don't know that that's the exact word. I don't know if he said dominate or it's going to be easy or he's going to run away with it, but it meant that Usman's not going to have a hard time. Now, I find Blahal to give very good analysis. I find him to be a very intelligent guy and he's clearly a fan of the sport, right? I mean, he follows the sport. You could go ask Google or you could go ask Blahal. You're going to get the same answer, right? You know guys like that. That was a big one for me, and I wish he would have elaborated, because with what evidence does he come to that conclusion? And it's not to say that he's wrong. I just feel when those things come out, well, you got a 50-50 shot. Maybe you look really good, or maybe you look like a fool. I still want to know what your reasoning is before going into it, because these boys have already fought. It was a damn close fight. Nobody whipped anybody's ass. Unless you want to say they both whipped each other. That was the closest, hardest, dirtiest fight of my life, truly, without exaggeration. We have something that's different within both camps. The irony here is it's the same thing, which they both left the teams that they were training with before, and they're both training in a new situation. I would love to make a big deal about that. I would love to have a whole narrative and talk to you guys at, at length about Kamara changing and then trying to decide whether that was good or bad. Or Colby changing camps and deciding whether that was good or bad. They've both done it. And quite frankly, I don't know they've ever looked better. Kamara Usman's victory over Gilbert Burns because of the adversity that Kamara faced in that first round where Kamara was hurt, where his knees wobbled, and he refused to take the fight to the ground, which he could have done. He wanted to stay on his feet and solve that problem and then ultimately did. That was massive for me. That was a massive moment in my experience of watching Kamara Usman. For him to send Masvidal side, not only knocked him out, knocked him sideways with that right hand on his feet, a skill and a weapon that we've never seen Kamara use, at least not to that extent, that was massive for me. But if I go and look at Colby's last two fights, the ground and pound one-sided beating that he put on Tyron Woodley, which people say MMA math doesn't work, sure it does. Two guys have a common opponent, how did they both do? I mean, right, it, of course it matters. But I'm talking more about just the dominance that Colby had. Because I don't agree with the narrative that Tyron Woodley, you know, is out of his prime. I don't. Tyron Woodley, for me, is dangerous. He's a killer. He's a stud. He works his ass off. He shows up in shape. He's not as scared to fight. I mean, Tyron Woodley's as good as he ever was. So if you can go out there and you can put him in some positions that he doesn't want to be in, you get a pat on the back. And I'm bringing that to you because that's Colby at his new camp did that to Tyron Woodley. I bring it to you because that's Kamara Usman with his new training under Trevin Whitman and his new partners, Justin Gaethje being one of them, going out and showing off this incredible boxing skill. These guys have gotten better. That's what I see. I see two guys that have gotten better. And I also don't feel we all have fully agreed in as a community as to what's at stake here. Yes, the welterweight championship is up for grabs, for sure. And there's some money and there's some pride and there's some esteem. Guys, they're fighting for the GOAT. They're fighting right now for the greatest welterweight in the world. They're fighting for the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. How can we not, as a community, say that that's on the table? Kamara Usman is ranked number one. I have all sorts of problems with those rankings. I don't have a problem with that. I'd be furious if he was not number. Kamar Usman's the greatest fighter in the world, pound for pound, the end. And he's this close to chasing down the ghost of George St. Pierre.
to become the greatest ever. Are you guys aware of that? Are you aware of what you're witnessing within Kamar Usman? A guy that's cleaned out the division is now going through it a second time. It is absolutely remarkable. But where do you think Colby fits on on that list? Honestly, the only guy that I've ever heard answer this honestly publicly is John Anik. John Anik was asked to name his top five welterweights ever. Ever. So now you are bringing in the Matt Hughes of the world. You are bringing in a prime BJ Penn. You are bringing in George St. Pierre. Ever. John Anik put Colby as number five ever. And there was nobody in this current era in front of him except for Kamara Usman. This is John Anik's list. That's the truth. That's how good Colby Covington is. I see people resisting the Paul brothers. Guy, the Paul brothers are tough guys. They're badasses. And they're likely to whip yours. So you can get in line with it or you just continue to deny it for the hater standpoint. But that's what's happening to Colby right now. John Anik is correct. Colby Covington is a top five welterweight to ever live. When you have the top five guy and a number one guy in the same era, they must fight. But when they fight, we as a community must also admit what's at stake. What's at stake is pound for pound status. Colby Covington was a champion who never lost, but is no longer the champion. So when I tell you that Colby has had to overcome things and deal with people and their personal judgments and they're resistant to his success, try that one on. If you're a new fan, you're listening, go, oh, Chan must have misspoke. Wait a minute, he was a champion, he never lost, but he's no longer the champion. How's that work? I don't know, but that's what happened. This fight, Blahal Muhammad's not wrong for saying that. I mean, if he thinks that Kamara's going to run through him and he's seen some new skills with Kamara, enough to say that he's throwing out as good as Kamara was that first night and he's he's made a gain, or does Blahal Muhammad think that Colby's declining? He didn't finish the thought. I want him to finish the thought. I want to know how he's getting to that deduction particularly if he ends up being right. I'm going to want to listen to Blahal in the future. I'm going to want to listen to this analysis, but I don't know how we got to that point now. I cannot see this fight any other way than picking up right where we left off as the hardest, closest, and dirtiest fight I've ever seen.